All right, Alberta. So if I've said this before, and I'm sure I have, and I know I've probably said it to other people that I know personally. First off, just to qualify myself, um, I have um, uh, my niece living there happily, and her husband and their and their baby. Well, not baby now. She's seven years old. Um, I had my uncle, my, my dad's brother. He just passed away, but he lived there for years in a place called Two Hills, outside of Edmonton. I think it's the place at the Egg. Anyways, um, uh, I got uh, aunties there um, from my mom's side. Um, I uh, have one of my, when I was really young, my next girlfriend moved there, and I came and visited a few times. Um, you know, I like Alberta. I've been to your Calgary Stampede, and, and I look forward to going to it again someday. I own oh, my, my son-in-law. He worked for years in the. Um, he was. Uh, he went there as a welder, but he was. He was, changed to the cranes, and you know, became a. You know, that's what he did for years, and got him and ended up marrying my daughter, and they have kids, and he's back here now. But I mean, he had a, a good life and, and got ahead doing it like a lot of BC boys and girls did, heading over there for the work and stuff. So, why the hell? Do you guys always try to force stuff on BC instead of working with BC? And you can say, oh, we, oh, we, oh, we do, we do, we do. No, you don't. You go to who's ever in power and try to get them to put pressure on us. And then you go to them when you're not, if pressure's not working and try to up the pressure and say, well, they got to do this. They got to allow this to, you know, to go across. This is Canada. We get to go, we get to just go across their land and, and it's like, wait a minute. There are a lot of people here that get it and would rather not have trucks and railway bringing stuff to the forts. Yes, there's a lot of people that want to see benefits to BC. Why not? The actual place where you're piping it from, your pipe to the, our borders, or you know, between BC and Alberta, it's further that that pipeline will be much further from your border all the way to the water. So it's going across a lot of our land. Also, it's going into our ports, which has a whole other industries, huge industries. Tourism, fishing, you know, it's, it's also transportation for other products, <laughs> lumber and stuff. So your whole mindset's been wrong. We should be your best buddies. Bugger back east and trying to appease them and and promise them tax dollars and, 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 you know, sending money to other provinces to help out as they help you out to basically bully us. All you've had to do all these years is work with us because the people of BC want to have a good life standard too. They want to have good jobs for their kids. They want to have good infrastructure. So yes, there are some that don't want any of that and they don't want anything of anything and then, and, you know, and sometimes some of the things they fight over are correct in, in areas. I mean, if there's, a, if there's a, a native reserve that just truly doesn't want it going through or because your stupid route goes through, say, their, their watershed or something or their hunting grounds or their cemeteries, well, that's dumb on your part too. Spend the extra money to go around, get them to help plan where it's to go around and get them to monitor that, that stretch of the pipeline. Pay them, right? So, and then you would say, well, that costs more money. Yeah, it costs more money, but it gets done. And once it's in place, once you've run the extra pipes, they're there. It's done. All right, so you could have used 100 connecting pipes in this one area, and you ended up using 250. That's an extra 150, yes. But it's done now. And once the flow is in there, and once it's, you know, down the line, really, who cares? How many... How many days would it take to pay for that extra piping and extra time? And if it even takes a year or so, I doubt it would, but even if it took a year, so what? It's done. It's, it's now supported. It's protected. It's encouraged. And it's financing. And if you're saying, well, you know, the, the people that are backing us and giving us our money to start this up and that from the states and that, you know, they, they want to they make bang for their buck. Well, too bad, boys. It's actually, a not, it's actually a resource of Canada. I know you guys like to think of it as a resource of yours. So it's a resource of yours for the oil, but our land 
use Canada. It's hypocritical. And we sit there and scratch our heads and go, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't give the lion's shares to someone else just because you're being paid under the table. And you're happy. You know, a few of you are getting money and you've got businesses and employment for yourself here. And then screw the guy next door to you that really is a huge part of it, making it across seas, all across our land, and economically best to do pipeline into the water, dangerous for spillage and all that, so it needs as high end of security as possible and clean up stuff right on site and, you know, spend that money up front. It's all coming from oil that is all Canadian oil, not yours. Oh, no, it's Albertan. No, it's not Albertan. And if it's Albertan, then it's BC land and you can't go across it. We'll charge you for, you know, per, per foot. <laughs> so cooperation starts with common sense. We're the ones you should have been dealing with all these years. And then when back east was trying to put their hands in the kitty, you would have had us supporting you for how much they really get because really you're digging it out and producing it or, or at least getting it in the pipe because raw bitumen isn't really a whole lot of production, is it? Uh, heating it, I guess, so that it'll get through the pipes and transport. But, you know, at our end, we got all the pipes, we got all the any spills that happen across the land, and we got the spills in the water, and we got the loading of the ships. All that costs money, too, and an effort, but creates jobs as well. And then now, back east, who doesn't do a whole lot other than, you know, pay off their own riding areas, <laughs> and, uh, you know, bring in car dealerships that are from the States, so really, they're, they're always going to be dicey. The minute the economy gets tough down there, well... Who are they going to close first? They're going to close us first, especially over even themselves, and then especially over even Mexico, which has cheaper labor. So, you know, really, they need to produce. The other thing is, if you're going to go across Canada, I don't mind that idea of, uh, you know, the, the gas and the oil and that all, you know, having a corridor. I think it's a good idea. And Quebec is a province, too. It's not a country. I know they feel they are, but they're not. They're at this point, still part of our country, so they shouldn't be able to control. They shouldn't be able to buy in cheaper when they want, get it from you when they want, and snub their noses at the rest of Canada over it. They should be part of the solution. And there's provinces past them that could really use Canadian resources so that if there's a problem in the world, we can still heat homes. People can still have a warm house in winter. So, smarten up. If we don't hate you, stop hating us. <laughs> and well, we don't hate you, but yeah, it seems like you do. <laughs> And um, make sure that uh, the, the people that are you're trying to overpay get less. Yeah, it's too bad. That's got to go to supporting Canada. It is their resource first, so all Canadians should actually profit from it as much, if even more so, than some of these rich guys that have you know funded. Um, they haven't even really funded that much, have they? What do you think about it? The amount of money they've taken back out of the system, they're laughing. You know, and when they've got contracts where you ship at a loss per barrel, but you still have to do it because you're under a contract, who the hell signed that contract? What kind of business person did that? Some business person that's got money in a, you know, an offshore account. And that's the only reason you do that. Why would you sell out your own resource and sell out your own people? You know, unless you were being, you were able to be bribed. So... You look at other countries that are smarter than us and uh, they have natural resources and they're quite wealthy, a lot of them. Because some of the European ones, is it Norway? Uh, one, of, one of them, Norway, I think it's Norway. One of those countries that has, you know, the, the oil has been making their lives such a high standard for all their people first, right? Because it's theirs. You know, we'll ship it, we'll give you a good deal. But you can't own it outright, you can't abuse us. Um, quick little uh, side sidetrack. Let's uh, not let uh, get fooled and let our dairy and, and beef and all that change. Well, I'm glad we didn't on this last negotiation with Freeland. But um, you know, if if we can't get mass when we need them, even though we're providing the pulp for them, uh, you know, for this uh, COVID-19, then can you imagine if there's ever a run on eggs and milk and uh, ours have to come across the border for us to eat? To, you know, look after our children. Uh, so, well, yeah, let's keep ours separate. And if it costs a few more pennies because we're not dumping like they are, they're overproducing and dumping. 
So that way they run their prices down, which but at the end of the day, the way that works is once you run out all the competition, then you have a monopoly, then you can jack it up and there's no one to come back because they've all been wiped out of business. I mean, if you don't have any more cows, you don't have anyone that and suddenly just make cows appear <laughs> and farms appear and people train to do it because everyone's walked away from it for 5, 10, 15 years. Then it's a monopoly and then all of a sudden, you know, that cheaper milk might be the price we used to pay and then it'll be, oh, oh, we used to pay that anyways. And then it'll be like, oh, it's more than we used to pay. Oh, well, that's inflation. Oh, no, it's really high. And if you cross the border, it's cheaper. Yeah, because they don't really give a shit about us. As long as they have people out there like Trump that can, can get into power, we have to be prepared for the Trumps. And that requires business people that know what they're talking about, that know how to negotiate, and know when it's time to stand up. Um, right now, we should be standing up over this mass and saying no more pulp and no more nurses. Nurses, we're not allowing you to cross our borders to go work in Detroit. The thousand of you are going to get into the hospitals here. We'll pay you your wage here. You won't have to travel. And, um, you know, that's it. And, and if they say, well, that's really unfair, you know, people die. You know, yes, you do. And so do we because we don't have the mass and now we're losing our doctors and nurses aren't willing to come in with no mass, no protection. They've already shot, they've already warned us. You know, why should they come to work if we can't even provide them the basics to, you know, protect them and their, and their own families when they go home? Like, you know, do they literally have to just die for their job? Because we don't know how to uh, fight for our share of, uh, well, for our, our orders, <laughs> our, our already agreed to orders. So, um, yeah, a few business people won't hurt. But uh, hopefully we, let's find ones with some heart. If they don't, let's have a way of getting rid of them. Because uh, at the end of the day, you know, um, as long as greed's running the world, we're going to keep having major problems like we have now. All right, that's a big one. Cheers, bye.